will try and introduce one or two of the riders to you, but if you quickly look through your programme, you'll be able to check as quickly as I can. Vince Kinchin is uh, leading those riders as they come round past us. He had a good day over in Germany a few weeks ago, and uh, we're pleased to hear that he's representing as well. Um, chopping and changing back through the national class, obviously Anton Locke has done it fairly early, as well as Rock Snow. Number 86 there, I'm sure a lot of you will recognise his Paul Hurry, the Peterborough Speedway rider. And as they come round, I think you'll agree with me that we have got a tremendous lineup of competitors this afternoon. Number 41, James Dean, and great to see the very colourful Richard Musson here this afternoon. I've not seen too much of him this season, so I'll be hoping for great things from Richard Musson, number 12. National class winner here last year, so he'll be looking to go well in the national class. Number 16, the flying Dean Garth, travel all the way up from Cornwall. Number 263, Graham Gordon. Excellent speedway rider, Graham Gordon, and has been going very, very well on the grass. One or two more riders that we're used to seeing in the summer centre. Mike Curry, number 100, number 147 is Paul Friend, of course. First of our 500cc sidecars goes fast, and there is our British Masters 1000cc champion. They've got it the wrong way around for the Prader riders. Ken taking a little bit strong way around it during the parade on the back of passenger or get rid of the control of the tunnel. Rob Wilson and Vince Jones, just one of our 1000cc competitors. Mike Reed has decided on his 500 sidecar that he's going to get mixed in with them as well. And as indeed Blake Williams has, but while they say in the room book there is no rule about how many you should have on a Psyker outfit, he says a minimum of two, and as you can see on both those 500 outfits, they've decided to up the number a little bit. Rustling and Paul Urich, of course, I'm sure you'll recognise with those very distinctive leathers. They'll be looking to go well this afternoon. Not done too much in the Sunday Centre this year, but of course, the Psyker Spectacular, that was theirs this year. Number 84 in the solo class is Phil Morris. I'm sure there's a lot of people that follow Reading Speedway will hope that Phil Morris will go well this afternoon. Shane Baker in the sidecar class, a rider that we are hoping will go well this season. We missed him last year. Great to see him back again. And I do hope that as the riders have come round, you've now put a face to a number, a face to a name. Interesting, isn't it? Most of the time you see these guys, they're wearing leathers and crash helmets. Oh, one more sidecar crew coming past me is John Halsley. John, of course, was third here at this event last year, and I'm sure he's hoping to improve on that place. And one thing that uh, I'm pleased to notice there on the back of John Halsey's bike is Richard Jenner. Those of you that went down to the sidecar spectacular will be pleased as I am to see that Mike Berry's wandering around here somewhere. In fact, I think he's even signed on to try and help. But uh, also great to see that on the back of John Halsey as he comes around, you'll notice that Richard Jenner has hitched the lift just to show you all that uh, he has recovered or on the road to recovery, I should say. And uh, it's good to see. Nick Waters, I'm told, is also here as well. So uh, that's a little bit of good news. And as I quickly look down through my programme, the one thing that I have got to do while the riders make their way back to the pits, always nice that the riders do come out and show themselves to you. As always, I've got to give you the not starters. So if you like to turn your programs to page two, it gives you the complete list of riders. And if I can quickly run through them for you, in the close to club event, non-starters are number four, Bruce Richards. Also number 229, Phil Bowell. He's informed us that due to mechanical problems, he can't take part. So that's two in the close to club, non-starters, four and 229. In the national solo class, disappointing due to a call up to a speedway meeting this afternoon, number 31, Colin White, who rides for Arena Essex, is unfortunately a non-starter here. The speedway fixture brought forward. No other non-starters in the national solo class. That's certainly good news because there is a very impressive line up there. In the national 1000cc sidecar class, one or two changes of passengers. The first number 12, you did hear me put out a call earlier on this afternoon. Well, that call has been successful. Ray Clark rides in place of Pete Bassett. That's number 12, Tim Bennett, passengered by Ray Clark. Number 20, Chris Golden. Justin Westaway has moved his ride. Glenn Shuttle rides for Chris Golden. So that's Glenn Shuttle. And I say he's moved his ride because Justin Westaway is riding as passenger to Chris Hall. So Justin Westaway rides. Is he 
one off to close the club, then six in your program. Lockley goes into the lead as we go into that first bend. Marley Phillips, as you see, has gone after him, but another rider has now come through into second place. We look and stretch across that far side. No doubt about Anton Locke, who's got away from the rest of the field. Well, it does look like the tall figure of Pete Barnaby in second place. Warner up in fourth place, going well in that fourth place behind Marlin Phillips in third. But as they stretch out going down the back straight, is there going to be anybody to catch Anthony Locke? Quickly looking back through the programme, I can tell you these are course three heats and then a final. So, uh, third. Still Steve Warner holding off the rest of the pack. I can see Jeff Urban has now started to move through a little bit. Second place going to Pete Barnaby. And if there is anybody about as an engineer for the PA system, I've already had one or two people say they can't hear me. I know who that I would normally say that very tongue in cheek because there's a lot of people that say they don't want to hear me. But <laughs> we know we've had problems in this part of the world when I've been down here before. If the engineer is about somewhere, I can uh, tell you exactly where it is where they don't think they can hear me very well. So then on the first result of the afternoon, because uh, if there are any problems around the circuit, this is where we're going to find out about it. If you can hear me, that's great. Obviously, there's a lot of you who want to keep the results. The result of race one is a win for number 99, Anthony Locke in second place, number 133, Pete Barnaby. Third place, number 43, that of course is Martin Phillips. And fourth place, number 11, Steve Warner. They were followed home in fifth place by number 241. Sixth place, number 16. Seventh place, number 1. Eighth place, number 189. No other finishers, the winning time, 141.73. So, race one reads as 99, 133, 43, 11, 241, 16, 1, 189, and a winning time, 141.73. Not quite sure what the holdout was there a moment ago, but obviously uh, we've got a lot of people wanting to do well in this national event. If you look at heat one, Clayton Williams, who finished in fact third here last year. Vince Kinchin, we're not sure whether we're going to see Vince out. That does look like it is Vince that's going to the line, so either another bike or uh, not as serious as it first looked when he went out for that late practice. Paul Fry, of course, last year's winner. I'm sure a lot of people will be keeping an eye on the Exeter Speedway rider, Paul Fry. So he'll be one to keep your eye on. Phil Norris, the Reading Speedway rider. Paul Hurry, of course, is out there as well. He's the Peterborough Speedway rider. Justin Elkins from Paul. Last year's winner, Paul Fry, that gets to that first corner first. 
but right after him goes Paul Hurry and Vince Kinchin as they get close coming out of the exit of that top bend. Clayton Williams back in fifth place, but as I say that, he's moved through. Richard Musson goes through as well. So he's getting very, very tight for that third, fourth and fifth place. The exit of Speedway Rider, Paul Fry. Paul Hurry is still there after him in second place. And it does look as if we've unfortunately had Vince Kinchin pull out again. So obviously a lot of problems for Vince this afternoon. That's a great shame to see for any of the riders. But as we watch Paul Fry come down, he's Richard Mustard doing well to get himself up into third place. Well, Phil Morris it was, was in third, but Phil unfortunately looks to be dropping back through the field. Don't have disappoint the Reading Speedway fans that are here this afternoon because he'd started well up in third spot, but has dropped now back into fifth place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Richard Musson. Richard Musson has pulled out on that bit bend and uh, he was moving up through the field as well. So oh, great shame to see that because I really was hoping to see Richard Musson going well this afternoon. But Paul Hurry has not indeed dropped too far back off of Paul Fry. Four in that final, but the first checker flag in the national class goes to last year's winner, Paul Fry. For rider number 55, that is of course Paul Fry. In second place, number 86, Paul Hurry. Third place, number 7, Clayton Williams. And fourth place, number 84, Phil Morris. Fifth place, number 191, that's Justin Elkins. And sixth place, number 193, John Shanes. No other finishes, unfortunately, in heat one, but the winning time, 131.34. 131.34 the time, those numbers again. 55, 86, 7, 84, 191 and 193. for the first time. Oh, it looks like Glenn Cunningham has got himself to the front as you go into that first corner. But look at the flying Dean Garten come round the outside in that first bend. That's in the white and green leathers. I was going to say up to second place, but it looks as if he's just lost second place again. A close wrap this for second place. For that second place on the inside, we've got... Number 19, Trevor Eden making his return to grass track this season. He hasn't ridden on the grass for quite some years, and I won't embarrass Trevor by saying quite how many that is. But Dean Garden has got his work cut out to try and stay with him. So great to see Trevor Eden returning to the grass track. Thank you, going as well. Glenn Cunningham. Vincent, he wants to see what sort of time Glenn Cunningham puts up. But look at number 24, Rob Camden moving through. He's already got round Glenn Cunningham. But round Dean Garten and now goes after Trevor Eden. A good ride this from Rob Camden. He goes very wide on that first bend. But he's still right there in contention. And we look to see him go in the the last lap. Glenn Cunningham then. And Rob Camden working the hard way. Coming all the way through the field. He's now right on the back wheel of Trevor Eden. I'm sure he won't go as wide as he did last time on this first bend. This time he's much, much closer on the exit of that bend. Watch what happens on that pit bend as they go into it for the last time. As the checker flag comes down, Glenn Cunningham we know has got the victory, but has Bob Cander got enough in him to get that second place? He's going to be close to the line if he goes to the inside, but Trevor Eden hangs on. Oh, Dean Garden comes through for that fourth place. And it is indeed Graham Gordon that picks up fifth place, leading the rest of the riders home won the national solo class and it's heat two of course a win for number 98 Glenn Cunningham 
In second place, number 19, Trevor Eden. Third place, number 24, Rob Camden. Fourth place, number 16, Dean Garton. Fifth place, number 263, Graham Gordon. Sixth place, number 100, Mike Courage. Seventh place, number 202. Eighth place, number 125. The winning time, 134.14. 134.14 that time. Interesting to look at the time of Heat 1. But those numbers again, 98, 19, 24, 16, 263, 100, 202 and 125. like Neville Tatum was the rider that made the break into that first bend. I'm sure that's Neville on the outside. At the moment, can't pick up who that is on the inside. It looks like Steve Bishop, and indeed confirmed then that it is Steve Bishop. Well, that's very much going well here this afternoon. He leads rather Neville Tatum. It's third place who's got Dave Wright. Dave's certainly not out of contention for those front two, but it does look as if Steve Bishop got a big advantage on that first bend. As indeed he now looks to be pulling away from Neville Tatum in second spot. Great to see Neville right on the last Neville has his brother Kelvin, he says they are both preparing to do an awful lot more grass track this season. That's good for the world of grass track. And Dave Wright pushing hard for that second place and he now moves through in front of Neville Tatum. Well I was going to say that Dave Wright was being pushed hard but he's now got himself up into second place. Second, I'm sure we must have some sort of problem for Neville Tatum. He's gone past us very slowly indeed. It's Ricky Scarborough that's moved through in the third place. Uh, just as I say that, Ricky Scarborough puts it down on that first corner. So now Neville Tatum moves back into the third place. This time as they come round, it's a win for Steve Bishop. Dave Wright takes second. While almost coasting to the line, Neville Tatum does get that third place. I think he'll be very pleased with that. Look at the angle as he looks down at his machinery. And very unfortunate for Ricky Scarborough, but he has indeed got himself up again and made a place. It's race four that will give you the result of heat three. It's a win for number 134, Steve Bishop. It's second place, number 38, Dave Wright. Third place, number 150, Neville Tatum. Fourth place, number 327, Kevin Buck. Fifth place, number 147, Paul Friend. Sixth place, number 27. The winning time, 132.60, 134, 38, 150, 327, 147 and 27. So, heat three, we move on to heat four. The rider's already coming out of that big box. We move into the last of the National Solo first rides, I think we call them, because they've got three rides apiece. If you're keeping the scores at the back of the programme, then uh, you're very brave, because I certainly wouldn't make any attempt to. I'll leave that to the lap scorers on my right.
Frank Laferna though has made the break going into that first corner. Oh, riding number 44 this afternoon, we've seen Vatclaff have some very good rides on the grass already this season and he looks to be pulling away. Oh, tremendous start to the day's racing for Vatclaff Werner, we'll anxiously watch the clock. Looking for a challenge. At the moment, leading that challenge is number 41, David Steen, but he's being pushed very, very hard as they go into that uh, top bend for the second time. Oh, Dave Steen back in second place, but it looks fast and furious in that second and third spot. Still back in that burner, though, getting away from it. Mark Seawright is a very tall figure back in fourth spot at the moment with Andy Sale making his return again. There's problems for David Steen. Well, I thought David Steen was going to lose it coming out of that bend. He locked his machinery sideways but recovered brilliantly. Of course, he has dropped his back. Back to the race. Andy Sale is up in second. Mark Seawright now in third. Dave Steen relegated back to that fourth place after that error in this top bend. Mark Chesel is the rider in the red leathers that's battling there for that fifth place. But as we look to the chequer flag, they come round off that pit bend. My eyes will certainly be on the clock this time. Mark Chesel losing that battle with Mark C. Oh, Simon Giddings, I should say. Simon getting the best of him for that fifth spot. Then one, and it's a good win for number 44, Vakla Ferner. In second place, number 50, Andy Sell. Third place, number 167, Mark C. Wright. Fourth place, number 41, David Steen. In fifth place, number 179. Sixth place, number 758. Seventh place, number 188. And the winning time with no other finishes, 133.86. 133.86. Well, I can't work out what it is that uh, Graham Hurry's looking for, but I'm sure the marshals are helping him. <laughs> oh, a pair of goggles by the look of it. So if any marshals around the circuit have found a pair of goggles, or if you as a, a very vigilant spectator have spotted them, that man in the black t-shirt is Graham Hurry, he's the one who's looking for them. change uh, completely now to event two we move into race six and it's our first chance to see the national thousand cc sidecars in action here this afternoon coming to the line a very impressive lineup for our very first race rustling is riding number six ken lane at number seven alan blewett number three Sage Davis, John Hunt and Shane Baker. A very impressive first heat as we look across that far side. And it is Ken Lane by the look of it that's made the best of the stars. But look at Alan and John Blewett. Oh, Alan and John Blewett really caught up with Ken Lane after what looked to be a tremendous start. And Ken Lane has now dived inside of Alan and John Blewett, rustling, looking to go after him as well. Oh, the great start to the sidecar racing this afternoon as Ken Lane leads from rustling in second. Alan and John Blewett in third. Up in the fourth place is staged back there in fifth spot at the moment. But all eyes on those front two crews because Ken Lane and Mark Edwards look to be in very impressive form at the moment. But remember who won the sidecar spectacular. That, of course, was Russelling and Paul Urich as they move up closely in second place. Alan and John Blewett look to have lost that early advantage. They're going to now look on and watch what happens in front of them. Well, Russelling still there in second place, but he's very, very close. He certainly looks quick this afternoon as Ken Lane and Mark Edwards must be aware of that as well. He's right up there behind him in every corner. One more lap to go. It certainly looks to be very, very quick this sidecar racing this afternoon. No, that's quite a strong battle going on in front of them. They're being content to take third from their first ride, I'm sure. But look at the gap that's been opened up between those front two crews. Oh, we look to the checker flag this time. It's going to be Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. So tremendous riding from our British Masters there. They'll be aware, of course, that last year's winner, Roger Misa, is not here to defend his title this afternoon.
seven going in first place, that's Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. In second place, outfit number six, Russelling and Paul Urich. In third place, number three, the father and son crew of Alan and John Blewett. In fourth place, number 39, Shane Baker and Clinton Martin. In fifth place, number 26, Sage Davis. The winning time, 127.45, 127.45 the time. I'm sure you've all got that result for Heat 1. Seven. And of course this still with the national sidecars, we look across that far side, two riders that were here last year, and they both lead off together, Ivan Matthews, with a different passenger at the moment, that of course is Peter Jones, a very experienced sidecar passenger, but Ivan Matthews leading as they come round that first bend, oh, and Ian McCauley went extremely wide, but looked to pay off, because he got himself in front of John Aldrey. Two crews here that were here last year, Ivan Matthews, and as it was then, Mike Dowell's got second place at the Mormont Leonard Trophy meeting last year. John Halsley and uh, Tony Miles got third place behind them, so I'm sure both of these crews will be wanting to make up the fact that Roger Misa is not here. They've got a chance of winning it this afternoon. Oh, Ian McCauley putting the can amongst the pictures at the moment, though he's on very, very tight to try and get on the inside of Ivan Matthews. Problem for Paul Nelson by the sound of it. Sounds as if it's only gone on to one cylinder. And Ian McCauley has indeed got through in front of Ivor Matthews. On well, a brilliant ride this from Ian McCauley and Rick McCauley. Again, they've gone very, very wide, but it does look to be a very quick line. Well, they're the only crew that have decided to go that wide round. Ivor Matthews is trying to hold the tight. Keep the advantage going into that pit end. It doesn't pay off. Ian McCauley riding a very, very quick line. Oh, John Halsey looks to have uh, lost the impetus on those front two as they come into this top bend for the third time. Again, Ian McCauley goes wide. He looks to have a very quick line round that top bend, but indeed it's paid off as Ivor Matthews has to sell for second place. John Halsey in third. Bit number 15, that of course is Ian and Rick McCauley. In second place, number 15, Ivor Matthews and Peter Jones. In third spot, number 13, that of course is John Halsey and Tony Miles. Fourth place, number 18, Paul Nelson and Lawrence Matthews. No other finishes there, the winning time 132.70. 15, 15, 13, 18, 132.70 the time.
across the far side is race 8 that we've got on the line look to see who it is that makes the break going down that back straight and that does look to be Rob Wilson that's made the break we look at the other helmet Tim Bennett I think is up in second place at the moment as you watch the scene and come round off that first bend and confirms you that is indeed Rob Wilson and Vince Jones that have got away Tim Bennett with Ray Clark in the chair this afternoon has got himself up second place he's starting to get very very tight for that second spot as Rob Wilson now starts to pull away down that back straight he's opened up quite some difference between him and second place Tim Bennett doing his best to hang on to that second spot but as he goes wide you can see that he's going to be under pressure from Rob Wilson Jr. in fact so the Wilson family trying to make it one in the company in the first ride Rob Wilson Jr. has indeed got himself up into second place and for those of you that thought it might have been a misprint in the program there's now absolute proof that Rob Wilson and Vince Jones are leading in second place Rob Wilson Jr. and Jason Glennie as we go into the last lap Tim Bennett has been knocked back to third spot at the moment and Chris Norton goes after him for that third spot well, again we can only look at the time for Rob Wilson all sorts of problems for Chris Hill at the hole at the back of the field. But as we look to that final bend, it's the chequered flag this time for Rob Wilson and Vince Jones. They take the chequered flag. And I'm sure they'll be pleased to hear this result when they get back to the pits. Follow home in second place by Rob Wilson Jr. and Jason Glennie. Let's give you the official result of race eight. It was, of course, the win for outfit number 24, Rob Wilson and Vince Jones. In second place, number 25, Rob Wilson and Jason Glennie, junior, of course. In third place, number 12, Tim Bennett and Ray Clark. In fourth place, number 20, Chris Golden and passenger Glenn Shuttle. The winning time, 131.59. 131.59, so as we turn over the page, we've got the first heat of the 500cc National Sidecar. CC left-hand side cars. I know a lot of these guys would like me to pass on the apologies that there isn't so many of them here as there was last year. The reason being is that there's a big event on in France which a lot of them were invited to go to. Those who are here, of course, will be anxious to win this trophy. One very anxious, of course, is number 61. Leading already, that's uh, Rand Farmer and Scott Dunn. Followed in second place by Mike Reed and Andy Robertson. Well, it pleases me particularly to see uh, Raz Palmer and Scott Dunn out there today because less than a month ago I was down in the Kent area commentating a meeting where Raz picked up, unfortunately, a broken bone in his foot. But he says to me this morning that everything is a okay and he's back on board. Well, I politely said, there's only one thing you can do, Raz, go out there and prove it this afternoon. Well, it looks as if he's going to do exactly that. So as we 
go, it's to the last lap. Really doesn't look to be any answer at all to Raz Farmer and Scott Dunn as Mike Reed has to settle for second place. As I say settle for second place, Norman Haynes pushing him hard. And he's going to make him work for it by the look of it as he closes right up going into this last bend. We've got the checker flag ready for Ryan Farmer and Scott Dunn. They indeed take that checker flag. And Mike Reed looks to have done enough to hang on to that second place, or has he? Oh, Norman Haynes mounted a challenge, but it looks as if he left it just that little bit too late. Has to settle for third place. One in the 500cc National Sidecar event. Race nine in your programme, a win for number 71. That, of course, is Brian Farmer and Scott Dunn. In second place, number 57, Mike Reed and Andy Robertson. In third place, number 21, Norman Haynes and Neil Perknell. And in fourth place, number 11, that's Ricky Neal and Duncan Bradford. The winning time, 144.91, 144.91, 71.57. Well, I've been asked quickly if any of you have missed the sellers of the raffle tickets that they are very close to making a lot of uh, or what can you say is a very good collection for the St John's Ambulance. They are just folding the tickets up. If anybody has missed the sellers of the raffle tickets, I'm told there's a green and white tent where the riders sign on. Not green and orange, I can't get nothing by this afternoon, can I? Right. A green and orange tent. That's just up where the riders signed on, between where we're situated on the finishing line and the entrance to the pits to my left. If you uh, want to help towards that, as I say, in a very good cause, it goes towards purchasing new equipment for the St John's Ambulance. You've been very grateful so far, I will add that quickly. Those of you that have purchased raffle tickets, the club officials have told me that uh, donations have been exceptional this afternoon, but if there is anybody that's missed out, then uh, you can still buy tickets at the green, <laughs> green and orange tent, was it? <laughs> I'm colour blind, that's what it is, you see. You won't believe what I'm putting up with here this afternoon. I say I'm colour blind and they say, no, you're not, you're brain dead. Well, in your program and quickly remind you of what happened in the first race of the afternoon it was a win for Anthony Locke followed home in second by Pete Barnaby but it looks to be a little bit different this time I can't even see Pete Barnaby yes I can back in third place well, Marty Phillips is the one that's working his way up but the rider that took the checkered flag first time out was indeed Anthony Locke he looks to be going for the same thing in the second heat. Quite a difference he's got on that second place. He's opened up a very big advantage. Pete Barnaby's back in third place. Will he be able to make it up to second as he did in that first ride? Riders, it's heat two, a win for the uh, heat one winner. Number 99, Anthony Locke. In second place, number 43, that's Martin Phillips. And third place, number 133, Pete Barnaby. Fourth place goes to number 16, Andy Pennington. And fifth place, number 241, Jeff Urban. Sixth place, number one. And seventh place, number 189. Winning time, 142.72. 142.72 the time.
Got to that first bend though, and looking down the results, David Steen had a fourth first time out. Well, I must admit, if I remember back to those early races, it was problems for David Steen, so he'll be looking to make up for that. As I say, he's making up for it. Clayton Williams has moved through into the front though. Watch Clayton Williams come off that. David Steen in second, Mark Chesel going much better this time, up in third place because. Just in front of Dave Wright, number 38, that is Dave Wright. He had a second first time out, you might remember Dave Wright. So Mark Chesel doing well to stay in front of Dave Wright. Vince Kinching, great to see Vince out again. He's had a lot of problems going on this watching. See what happens just in front of him. Clayton Williams looks to be in control at the front of the field as Dave Steen seems to be losing the edge on Clayton Williams at the moment. If he's not careful, Mark Chesel is going to catch him up down that back straight as well. As we go into the last lap, this time as they come round faster. Mike Williams, traffic, last time out. Oh, Dave Wright now making his move on Mark Chesel. Those front and David Steen again has made a mistake on the exit of that first bend. Dave Wright and Mark Chesel move right up on the back wheel of Dave Steen, and it does look as if Dave Wright's got the better of that over Mark Chesel. Top of the line. Great Williams it is that takes it. David Steen in second, and it is Dave Wright that picks up a third place. Rider number seven, that of course is Clayton Williams in second place. Number 41, that's Dave Steen. Third place, number 38, Dave Wright. Fourth place, number 758, Mark Chesel. Fifth place, number eight, Vince Kinchin. And sixth place, number 125. And seventh place, 100. No other finishes there, the winning time, 135.33. 135.33, that winning time. And of course, going to Clayton Williams. for a scrutineer to make his way to the pit box please. Scrutineer if he can make his way to the pit box requested by the track officials. to me like Andy Sale is the rider who's got up in the second and is going for first. Back left, Werner went very, very wide on the exit of that first bend and it does look as if it is Andy Sale that's gone up there in the first place. He's coming fast, fast forward and back the second time. Back left, Werner has now got to be the man in pursuit. He led from start to finish in his first ride. He's now got to go after Andy Sale. Steve Bishop, third at the moment, but under pressure from Richard Musson. And it is Richard Musson that moves through. Look at Mac Laferna moving through, though. He dies with the inside line on this pit then. And he's on to the rear of Mac Laferna's bike. Richard Musson has moved right up onto Mac Lula and Andy Sell as well. A cracking scrap this one has turned out to be in heat six. And Frank Laverna establishes himself at the front, but look at Richard Musson going after Andy Sell. They've lost Steve Bishop completely in fourth place, but watch Richard Musson. He's very, very quick on the edge of this fifth bend. Back where Musson picks up the speed, into the last lap they go. 
looking down the exhaust pipe of Andy Sell, Richard Musson. He gets close, he holds it tight, drives hard coming out of the bends, Richard Musson. He really is a master of that sort of technique. Closing right up again, you can see he goes for the inside line and he's looking to go for second, locks it hard in the middle of the bend. Of the end, but Andy Sell hangs on. Terrific scrap between those two. A window for Vaclav Werner, his second of the afternoon. Your program, what a cracker it turned out to be. A win eventually for Vaclav number 44. In second place, number 50, Andy Sell. Third place, number 12, Richard Musson. Fourth place, number 134, Steve Bishop. Fifth place, number 191, Justin Elkins. And sixth place, number 147. Seventh place, number 193. The winning time, 133.38. 133.38. I'm watching Neville Tatum pulling out, unfortunately. I look across that far side because Paul Fry, one first time out, it looks to be going well this afternoon. Drives hard off that mid bend. Bill Morris it is that goes after him. Mark Seabright is up there in third place at the moment, looking perhaps for Bob Camden to move through. he done well in his first ride after missing the start, worked his way right the way through the field for a third place. But there's no denying Paul Fry at the moment. If they did, I'm sure they'd be pleased with Paul's performance so far. He holds the fastest time of the day from his first ride. We can only watch the clock now to see whether he's improved on that in his second ride. But there's problems for that second place for uh, Phil Morris. Two riders who know each other very, very well. Pit crew mates and ready speedway. Mark Seabright dives through on the inside. Oh, a tremendous move from Mark Seabright. Phil Morris must have wondered where he'd come from. Oh, down that back straight, and you see that uh, Paul Fry has just got that pit corner to negotiate to make it to the checker flag. Mark Seabright, a tremendous right. Or I should say an improvement for Phil Morris, the fourth first time out. He's now got himself up into third spot in Heat 7. The official result reads as a win for number 55, Paul Fry. In second place, number 167, Mark Seabright. Third place, number 84, Phil Morris. Fourth place, number 19, Trevor Eden. Fifth place, number 24, Rob Camden. Sixth place, number 263, no other finishes there, the winning time, 131.57 this time, 131.57. So he still holds the fastest time, but it was from that first ride, 135.33 the time there.
Glenn Kelly on this side, but Simon Giddings has gone with them. Paul Hurry it is that's made it to the front. Simon Giddings is the rider on the outside, but Glenn Cunningham is the one that's moving through on the inside. Now right up the inside of Paul Hurry as well. No, perhaps that's asking a bit too much. Paul Hurry going well at the front of the moment, but Glenn Cunningham never had a win the first time out. Paul Hurry did indeed get a second place. Both of these two on form this afternoon. Simon Giddings going well, holding that third spot at the moment. I think he's starting to lose ground on those front two. Well, I must say on the front two, but also his third place is starting to change as well. Good scrap they're going on for that third spot. So he's looking at the front. He is. looks now to be in much better form than he was in his first ride. That's a good scrap for that third place, and I think both those two riders are pushing each other along. They can see that they can gain ground on Glen Cunningham. Ricky Scarborough is the rider that's got himself into third place, just in front of Simon Giddings. Going after Glen Cunningham. I think this is going to be a close finish for this second place. No doubt about uh, Paul Hurry leading. He's just got to complete that pit bend. But that really is going to be close to that second place. Look at Ricky Scarborough starting to close. He's got one more corner. He's got the second flag approaching. He holds a very tight line. Drives you on the inside. But Glenn Cunningham just doing it up. Ricky Scarborough gets the third place. Simon Giddings gets the fourth place. And Dave Perry in fifth place. Great to see that Dave Perry is back on the grass again. See this heat aid, of course, and a fine win there for number 86. That, of course, is Paul Hurry. In second place, number 98, Glenn Cunningham. Third place, number 27, Ricky Scarborough. Fourth place, number 179, Simon Giddings. Fifth place, number 419, Dave Perry. Sixth place, number 327. The winning time, 133, exactly. 133 by number 86, Paul Hurry. <laughs> program a chance to see Ken Lane in action once again he indeed goes off that start line I was going to see Ivor Matthews in action again but there's problems for Ivor Matthews on that start line as you can see or well, the starting straight I should say the hand went in the air but he seems to be back in competition again but it's Ken Lane and Mark Edwards that leave Ian McCauley goes after them both those two and wins the first time out Ron Wilson had a win as well so uh, three early winners out together in heat four and we look to see who makes the best of this Ivor Matthews has indeed pulled out on that far side so problems for Ivor Matthews this afternoon oh Ken Lane and Mark Edwards it is that are leading Ian McCauley still there in second and Rob Wilson closing up on him in third spot all three of these crews remember he'd have a win first time out so this is quite a battle we've got going on out there at the moment but Ken Lane and Mark Edwards by a long way making the best of this oh, they come round towards us going into their last lap they do look in determined form this year I know it's uh, asking for 
keep saying the British Masters title because it is a very hard fought competition, but Ken Lane and Market, which do look to be in the very right sort of form if they're going to hang on to it. They know they've got a lot of strong competition, but meetings like this, when they are billed as big nationals and there's a good class here, if they can show their determination and domination, I should say, then that's exactly what they want to do. Of course, uh, back to event two, the 1000cc national sidecar, a win, his second of the afternoon for number seven, Ken Lane and Mark Edwards. In second place, outfit number 50, so score, still scoring well, Ian McCauley and Rick McCauley. Third place, number 24, is Rob Wilson and Vince Jones. Fourth place, number 20, Chris Golden and Glenn Shuttle. The winning time, 129.73. 129.73. Disappointed we look across that far side. We have heard from the pits that unfortunately Alan and John Blewett have pulled out of the meeting. John Halsey, I was expecting to see, but unfortunately he's not made it to the line either. It means we're depleted now to three outfits only. They include Say Davis, the Rob Wilson Jr. We'll take a little bit of time to get used to a completely different outfit. Let's not take it away from Sage Davis and Vince Davis as they lead in race 16. Jason Glenn is going well in second place. They did have a second first time out as well. And of course was behind father Rob Wilson. is competing in race 16. It does look as if Chris Hall has got problems with John Hunt's machinery. But as we see the checker flag being raised, it's going to be the first win of the afternoon for Sage Davis and Vince Davis. That's outfit number 26. Followed home in second place by number 25. And that, of course, is Rob Wilson Jr. and Jason Denny. with race 17 and you can see we're already underway and into that first corner it's rustling they're starting to show going after him number 39 that's Jane Baker and I was looking to see that we never had Roger Misa in this one Paul Nelson did have problems in his first ride it looks as if those problems have continued John Hunt of course was a non-starter so they're Oh, and Roy McGuigan. So there should only have been three riders, and one of those has already pulled off into the centre. So a little bit of an easy time for Rustling and for Urich. Second time out. Mm -hmm. Andrew Martin still in the back on the national scene. I'm sure they'll enjoy the experience here. Mm Shane Lapper, <laughs> Shane, I will get it right in a minute, Shane Baker and Linda Martin. Check a fag about to be raised and rustling. With a second place behind Ken Lane, first time out. 
pleased to get a win in his second week.